A very good morning to you, my dear sisters and brothers, and welcome to Carmel Light, to the day's reflection. Before we begin our reflection, let us now invoke the name of the Trinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, today is the 29th of November, and today is the first Sunday of Advent, a beginning of a new liturgical year. And for our gospel, we have the text from Mark chapter 13, 33 to 37. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, with the celebration of the first Sunday of Advent, we are beginning a new liturgical year. Advent, as we know, is a season of grace, a time offered by the Church for the preparation of the birth of the Lord in our hearts. We are called to reflect not much on how he was born, rather to understand and realize the purpose why he was born. Now, there is a story of the frog and the scorpion, where a scorpion met the frog on the bank of a stream and asked the frog to carry him across on its back. Now the frog asks, How do I know you won't sting me? The scorpion says, Well, if I do so, not only you, we both will drown and die. Now the frog is satisfied and they set out. But in midstream, the scorpion stings the frog. The frog feels the onset of paralysis and starts gradually to sink, knowing they both will drown. But the frog has just enough time to ask, Why did you sting me, brother? The scorpion replies, Well, it is my nature to sting. And what is God's nature? We all know it well. To save. Advent is also a time of hope. It is a time to bring to expression all that we hope for and is also a time for telling the truth. Truth about our weariness and our anxieties and also about God's relentless love for the whole world. Today's gospel pulls back the curtain on false hopes and realities in order to reveal God's commitment to enter into and redeem our lives and the world. Mark's Jesus wants to reassure his disciples that despite the difficulty of their current circumstances, justice is coming, healing is coming. The disciples' job is to be vigilant, to be on watch for God, even when they feel helpless, because God is at work in the world. He is engaged in restoring peace and harmony in the world a masterpiece of his passionate love. This Advent, 
will likely be a bit different for many of us. Many of the rituals and traditions that have shaped these days will not look quite the same at least this year. It makes me wonder if we might have a unique opportunity to keep watch for God. Not because we have anything else on our to-do lists, but because we desperately need to experience connection in the midst of isolation, to see the glimmers of light in darkness, tendrils of hope in all that wearies us, signs of peace in all the chaos, gestures of love in all that divides, and glimpses of joy in the many sorrows. And Advent invites us to be attentive to such glimmers and signs and gestures. Dear sisters and brothers, Advent invites us to keep watch for God, looking for Christ in the people we cross paths with and people we zoom with in all that we do and all the spaces we connect so that we might not just focus our attention in Advent on what is ahead, that means our celebrations of the birth of Christ or our hopes about the return of Christ, but with hopeful eyes join in a present tense Advent, an Advent focused on being awake to God's redeeming work in the world here and now, a present tense Advent that not only expects God's arrival, but assumes God's ongoing presence in the here and now. In the midst of all our preparations and our uncertainties, we are reminded to keep watch for God so that we might recognize Jesus being born into a world which is in great need of healing and hope. It is true, for God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It is true that Jesus affirmed, I have come that they may have life and life in abundance. It is true that the prophets prophesied, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting, the Prince of Peace. And it is true that the hour comes and it is now that the true worshippers shall worship God in spirit and in truth. So, dear friends, let us enter Advent in hope, even if it means hope against hope. Let us see visions of love and peace and justice. Let us affirm with humility, with joy, with faith, with courage, Jesus Christ is the life and light of the world. Well, in these Advent days, let us be courageous and remember that the power of God is already at work in the world, especially in the midst of our present pandemic. God's power is also at work in our struggle for justice, peace and love in our families and places of work, in our human frailties and weaknesses. The power of God is present here and now and our task is to place our hope in that mighty power. To keep watch, to be present, to pay attention and to prepare places where God is being born into our world, especially our hearts. What Advent is encouraging us is that we must live now with faith. We must live now with love. And what drives us on to live with faith 
and to share this love is our hope. And this is what it means to prepare for Christmas, to help each other as we go through these difficult times, but with hope in our hearts. A hope that feeds the deep faith that we must recommit ourselves to our friends and to people and to the world in which God is alive and active. And also that we commit ourselves to reaching out in love, caring and compassion and most of all, do that all with a joyful heart. Advent reminds us that our mind is a ventilator. Our heart is a window. Our self is a door. It's time now to open our minds to fresh ideas, our hearts to more people and our lives for deeper commitment to the one who comes. Sadly, we busy ourselves with shopping for Christmas. What about stopping for Christ? I mean to say, stop, watch and wait. Dear friends, the season of Advent is a holy time for us for contemplating the salvation given to us. This season encourages us not to try the best deals when it comes out for our Christmas shopping or to go to extreme lengths to make our Christmas very special. The season of Advent rather reminds us of the past when Jesus was born for the purpose of our salvation. It reminds us of Jesus' presence in our lives today and it reminds us to look forward to when Jesus will come again at the end of the world. During her time on earth, St. Teresa of Calcutta once said, Yesterday is gone, tomorrow has not yet come. We have only today. Let us begin. So, we have to be courageous enough to ask God our questions, to be humble enough to be open to God's reply, and to be patient enough to wait for God's plan of salvation available to each one of us. Let us now end our reflection with a short prayer. Lord, you are Emmanuel. You are God with us. Remain with us forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Psalm 80 verses 2 to 3, then 15 to 16, then 18 to 19 is the responsorial psalm today. The psalmist here Praying for the people invokes God to come to save the people. There is an expectation that God will finish the work which God began in establishing a bond with the chosen people. The final phrase of today's excerpt promises the people's allegiance to God as God renews the covenant with the people. Let's pray that psalm.
God's blessing my dear friends may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen today we remember all those who are celebrating their birthday especially murthy mudaliar from kolaba mumbai shalat lobo from bengaluru Akshata Xavier Lopez from Honnavar Ligri de Souza and Lisha de Souza We wish you all a happy birthday God bless you We also pray for the departed soul of Godfrey de Souza from Daisar Mumbai John and Ramada Masquerenes from Daisar Mumbai May the Lord grant them eternal rest. Brothers and sisters, I wish you a happy new year. Don't get confused why I am wishing happy new year now. As we are already informed, today is the first Sunday of Advent and today is the beginning of a new liturgical year may this year help us to come closer to god that's all for today have a great sunday see you tomorrow bye bye